It's so easy every day living in love who on and only be gay. We got rock and roll, we got the blues. Stepping in the hall, we don't and all cowboys to the dust in the preview mirror. You can't see our rhythm and roots. Hi, the first tune we'll be playing is called Black Now by Wayne Shorter. Hi, welcome to another edition of LBK Rhythm and Roots Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Robertson. I'm here today with my co-host, Rhonda Taylor. Hi, Jason. Hi, Hi how everybody. are you today? I'm doing great. This is Good. a really nice day. 
we are uh, here at the Spirit Ranch, and we are in the pavilion. What a beautiful setting this yes, is. Yes, we've had some rain recently, so I'm sure you can see that there's a lot of green happening. Little rivers full. And it's fabulous. Peacocks walking yeah. around. It's a beautiful day. And today we have got the treat of having TTU Jazz Collective with us. We just yes. got through hearing a mini concert. That was amazing. That was an wasn't extra it? special treat with sugar and cherries and everything on the top oh, of it. Man. For real. How cool was it that? It made me want to throw a dinner party, <laughs> like a sw- swanky dinner party. <laughs> so, why don't we start with Nigel and let's just introduce yourself, tell us what you play, where you're from. We'll just go down the line and get to know you guys a little bit. Hi, I'm Nigel Cathay. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I did my undergraduate work at the University of Alabama. I'm here at Texas Tech University um, pursuing a master's in jazz, and I'll be graduating on Friday, actually. So, Congrats, um, man. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we're just here. I'm the jazz trumpet teaching assistant, and I, I sometimes play piano. So, Thanks, Nigel. My name is Devin Guerrero. I play the bass. Uh, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, originally. My degrees are in... Uh, music, music education, music theory, currently pursuing a PhD in music theory at Texas Tech, and uh, teach, I teach classes there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Brett Ramirez. I play keys. Um, I'm from Canyon, Texas, not too far. And yeah, I'm uh, studying music composition undergraduate. Hello, my name is Ryan Pound. I'm the drummer. Uh, I'm getting my undergrad my bachelor's degree in percussion performance at texas tech and i'm from mesquite texas hello i'm carson green uh i'm originally from lubbock texas uh born and raised i'm about to graduate with my degree in music composition from texas tech uh i'm also in a punk rock band called name brand check us out nice will do (laughs) <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine Ewald, and I play saxophone. I'm originally from Chicago, and I did my undergrad at Illinois State University, and I'm currently pursuing a double master's in classical and jazz saxophone, and I'll be graduating with Nigel on Friday. Woo-hoo. Right on, you guys. Okay. Congrats yeah. to the grads No here, kidding. Man. Yes. And I, t- I just learned a lot by y'all just introducing yourself. I mean, y'all are talking about majors that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> but how cool is that? So tell us a little bit about how the TTU Jazz Collective came together. So explain exactly what it is, what yeah. what the TTU Jazz Collective <laughs> how is. How does that to come everybody. together? Uh, I, well, so I guess last summer, we, we started playing jazz together at school in the jazz combo and in the jazz big bands there. Uh, shouts out to Ben Hoagland and Stephen Jones and Fabio Agostinas, and who did I forget, and Kevin Whalen, our jazz instructors there at Texas Tech. Um, yeah, so we started playing together, and as jazz musicians do, we tend to like to perform maybe more than they require us to for money, right? Uh, you know, to maybe be professional, right, in a way that does, school doesn't offer for us, unfortunately. Uh, so just, that's exactly what happened is I went out, I think I went to HEB and was like, hey, you guys, would you like to have a jazz trio play or something? And they're like, sure, why not? And um, you know, they agreed to pay us X amount, and I brought some friends with me, and we played, and I said, what's our name? I don't know, the TTU Jazz Collective. And that's what it is. It's This is a sort of a subset of a much larger group it. of instrumental, in, instrumentalists that have gone to Texas Tech and go to Texas Tech that we kind of rotate in and out for each other. And some of us are really good at getting gigs, and some of us are less, you know, less invested in that. So uh, if we get a call, we'll say, yeah, we'll play, we'll show up if we have time, if, we're, if we can do that, if we're available. So it's kind of very loose how, how it runs. <laughs> yeah, but how cool that it's never the same group yeah, anytime, almost never, you yeah. know? Very rarely. A well, collective, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I noticed when y'all were playing that uh, how each individual player was so into what they were doing, but they, y'all seemed to also be just as into what each other was doing and jamming when it was their turn or whatever, and your direction was so subtle and awesome. I just thought that y'all just... Oh, I'm no, surprised that you're not it, always man. working together every single day because it just really seemed so natural. And that was pretty amazing, yeah. I think that's kind of the beauty of jazz. You um, study and then you come together and you're able to make, uh, you're able to produce something that's kind of organic, but that's also scripted in a way. Um, we have a guide, we have a roadmap, we have a form that we follow, but we all have our own individual styles. Yeah, and, and I so, could see that yeah. and how, how well it blended. Yeah, but yeah. And I think that's the beauty of this music. It kind of brings everybody together. So Yeah. yeah. Well, and y'all are so tight. I mean, the cues and, it was and great. watching yeah. each other, very, very tight. <laughs> it was. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm a singer, so as a singer, I'm always wanting to sing, no yeah. matter if I don't know the song, if it's just an <laughs> instrumental. Not once did I want to sing over y'all. I just Mm-mm. wanted to listen. 
I never came up with a single lyric over y'all. <laughs> I just listened. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy about that. Especially that was great. some of the yeah. tunes. I mean, the music speaks for itself. It does. It's, yeah. it's, it's really well composed. And I mean, we just thank you for the people who wrote it. <laughs> so, yeah. so tell us about the first song that you guys played for us when we first started the show. Yeah, that tune was um, Black Nile. That's by one of my favorite composers and saxophonists, Wayne Shorter. Um, he actually just passed recently. So um, that's kind of the inspiration for the original tune I wrote as well. Well, not that tune, but Wayne Shorter. Um, I was studying him and I was saying, hey, I kind of want to write something that Wayne Shorter would write. And I hope I did the job right. In but, that style? Yeah, in yeah. that style. So, um, But the first tune was called Black Nile. It's kind of a hard bop standard and um, it's got a lot of energy and that's kind of why I like it. So, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Thanks. So when you're writing a song, mm -hmm. an instrumental song, are you thinking of a story? And it's just, I mean, it's not, there's no words is what I'm getting at. It's like, how are you, how are you, how do you think of how something's going to sound? Are you thinking of a, uh, yeah, what are you thinking um, of? It depends. It depends. Every, oh, every um, project is a little different. I typically am not the best at writing words. So I'll typically just write the music for a lot of tunes and a lot of projects. And a lot of times I get so invested in that I really don't want words on top of it because sometimes yeah, it doesn't it can, need it. But yeah, I'm it just wondering how you think. Distract. Like, does somebody do you write all the parts, or uh, you're just writing the yeah. part that you are yeah. going to be performing, and then somebody else brings in uh, what would be well, on the I'm, keys right yeah, here? If they want to bring in backgrounds, I know Brett writes backgrounds for different things, but um, if they want to bring in backgrounds, they can definitely put it on that. But uh, I, I'll typically make I write the whole thing so I know how I want it to go. That's so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. So do all of you compose music individually? Do, do anybody else? At some extent, yeah. Here, Brett, say yeah. something. Uh, I, I actually just got done taking a, a, uh, a course on big band arranging. So oh, cool. our, our big band is hopefully going to perform some of my charts in the coming semesters. Um, when I write jazz stuff, I'm always thinking about colorful harmonies and... and um, I know Nigel also likes to, um, sometimes we steal chords from a song that we like yeah. and we take a little piece of a melody from another mm -hmm. thing. We yeah. Like, okay. And we kind of mix yeah. it together and that's it's for that's, your own idea of it. Yeah. That's, that's, great. Our yeah. Yeah, that's why I was curious. Yeah. Like we're yeah. writing words of course, but you aren't. And it was like, it seemed like a story even without words. How it's how I felt about it. Listening to it. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. I also compose music. I I usually don't compose jazz because it seems intimidating. <laughs> I mean, <too. laughs> uh, but yeah, I I guess what I mainly do is I write for uh, my rock band that I'm in, and then for school I write a bunch of chamber music, which is just classical music but with a smaller ensemble than an orchestra. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I think Carson, you guys like did you went to the trumpet competition or something? Oh, yeah. Uh, Premier his original This there. past semester, I wrote a trumpet octet for the trumpet studio ensemble, and uh, that got performed at the National Trumpet Competition. Oh, oh, wow. like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. yeah no. And I think I premiered <laughs> one, what was it, the Wizards piece? Or that at was TMEA. one that premiered in April. Uh, that was at TMA. That was in San Antonio. Uh, they're taking over. Oh, that, they're taking over. Yes. So. How did you do in the competition? Points. Um, we got to the prelims, but we didn't advance any further. Hey, that's pretty impressive, though. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. <laughs> so, all you guys are from all over. So, mm -hmm. do any of you plan to stay here and pursue your careers in music yeah. here? Your teaching career? I'm sure some of you are probably going to go into the teaching field. How about how about you? You're from Chicago, is that right? Yes. So, what what are your what are your plans? Yeah. So, my current plans are to stay in Lubbock for at least another year because I have some teaching jobs, teaching saxophone lessons. So, I'm going to try to pursue that full time as well as try to gig with some of these guys still. Um, unfortunately, Nigel's leaving, but the rest of them will be here. What about you, Carson? Where, where, where are you? So you're from... Um, I'm, you I'm from, from here. here. You're yeah. from here, so you're going to yeah. stick around? Yeah, I'm going to stick around. Uh, I teach guitar at School of Rock, so I'm going to... Oh, wow, so you know some teaching. of our buddies. we got some buddies we <laughs> oh, play yeah, with that, that play there. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, yeah I'm going to teach, keep teaching there for a little bit, and then uh, I'm in my punk rock band, Name Brand, and then I'm in a, another band where I play trumpet uh, called Strawberry Season. And we do a lot of gigs. Great. Nice. Yeah. How about you? Are you going to stick around? What are you going to do? Um, I haven't decided yet. I have one more year at Texas Tech, and I really just kind of started 
gigging and stuff lately. So well, you're a killer on the drums, <laughs> yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah, Ryan started playing jazz like what, like a, a year ago? Last maybe? semester. Yeah, he's a killer, wow. isn't he? Wow. <laughs> Thank I you. Love it. So yeah, I'm just gonna stick around here, finish my degree, and then kind of see what kind of opportunity opens up and go from All there. Right. Hold on. What about you? Uh, I'm uh, gonna continue with school. I kind of have decided that I'm gonna go into a bunch of debt and <laughs> <laughs> try to get my doctorate. Yeah, I decided that. <laughs> and maybe it'll pay off at some point. Um, um, but it looks like right now I've got another year here, and then try to explore the world a little bit that's my plan nice i suppose i should go um well i'm i'm almost half the way done with my doctorate and in music theory and um i would love to keep teaching at texas tech if they want to hire me you know absolutely hey, i'll be doctor soon so you can do that <laughs> uh, but i currently teach ear training uh the required course for all undergraduates um a lot of them think it's painstaking but some of them love it the group, especially the one, the group that we work in here, we, these are all fantastic musicians. So they all love the class that I now teach. That's some of my yeah, kids yeah. loathe. Um, but the the job for me would be teaching music at a university, uh, music theory, music uh, mu musicianship classes, sort of like music theory and ear training, and doing research in music theory topics that no one listening to this podcast will be interested in hearing. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm too quick to judge. Uh, but usually I bore some people with, with my, the details of my research. But yeah, that's my, that's my plan. Do you ever forward. think about going back to San Antonio? I've lived there and that's yes, one of my favorite Yes, yes. I, I would love to. I mean, I love plan it. on applying to every single place that has an availability with, yeah. when, I, when I get finished with my coursework. And if UTSA is on that list or if any of the that, schools yeah. in the you know, San Antonio yeah. area, I would love to. I, I absolutely miss San Antonio. With I loved it. I lived in Illinois as well. And I loved. I lived in Springfield, and I love San Antonio. And yeah. yeah, and when I was twenty, you couldn't pay me to live there. Or, yeah, really? Yeah, I mean, I hated it, but you know, that's, <laughs> I lived there for twenty years, and then yeah. I moved out and went to North yeah. Texas and all these other it's things. It's funny how home always calls you back. <laughs> it's though. true. Yeah. It really is. It really is. How about you, Nigel? Point. What are you gonna? Are you gonna stick around? You going back to Alabama? Or? Uh, I'll. Yeah, I'll be back. Well, I'll actually, be freelance in Nashville. Oh, so nice. I'm going to kind of more so focus on my writing, performing, and arranging, but I'm also going to focus more so on my teaching and getting my students built up in that area. So, because it'll be new, so I got to break into the scene.
nice. So tell us about the second song that you guys played. Yeah, that's Mr. Kenyatta, and that's a um, that's a tune by one of my favorite trumpet players, Lee Morgan. Um, he's, I mean, great composer, great player, great arranger, uh, orchestrator. He's he's the guy. Um, I personally have been into Lee Morgan since maybe a sophomore and undergrad honestly just because of the, the he's able to kind of jump into different styles but you can still know hey this is lee morgan right. you can say oh i know who, who this is simply by the way he articulates things he has um i mean my professor dr whalen he calls him the king of articulation simply because if you listen to him it's very distinct where he wants to place the beat where he wants to place a note mm -hmm. he does these different effects there's some things i mean you can study lee morgan for so long and never get close to what he's doing and that's why i study him so we got to get better. <laughs> Do any of you guys have day jobs other than being a musician or other than going to school? Does anybody? Does teaching lessons count? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah private instruction I counts. Teach bass lessons, uh... Yeah, I teach bass lessons. Actually, I teach all string lessons, violin, viola, cello, and bass. Any uh, budding string players out there need a private lesson teacher, you guys can hit me up. Do you do private ear lessons, too? Yeah, yeah, of course. I would love to. That would be amazing to do that as, like, a full-time gig, but... Uh, because I'm not be interested folks. in that. Yeah, like, yeah. That's something that Give the ear ring, training please. thing, man, is, is yeah, really I've cool. I've got days of material we could work on, so let me know. Anybody um, else? What else do I do? Yeah, I also teach lessons um, at a few, like, middle school, high school. Um, and like I said, I'm trying to get more students for next year. Nice. Yeah, so I teach remotely. Um, I work for a company out in Berkeley, California called San Ramon Academy of Music. So if you want to come take any lessons, you know remotely um i do that most i have a trumpet studio but i'm also the jazz improvisation teacher there so a lot of my boss he's also a piano a piano player and he'll send his students to me just to have jazz improvisation lessons and we cover things besides well we cover things like jazz improvisation but also jazz theory um harmony and just different things to um really bring those small it's younger students so really to bring them out of their shell and kind of expose them to more than just classical and just fundamentals and technique so yeah. And how did y'all get the influence of jazz in your lives? Was it, do you have jazz players in your families? Or Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'd like my, to hear individually everybody's how they got into jazz. I really would. Yeah. Just start and go down the line. So I was actually in really more so into gospel originally. My whole family, music. So, um, yeah, my uncle, he taught me how to play piano. And my uncle and my grandmother, they taught me how to play piano. My grandmother used to play organ in church, and my uncle plays piano in church still and I just steal things from them all the time I'm just like oh what's this little lick boom 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 and they'll teach me different things but um, I kind of got into more so this art form of specific like straight ahead jazz in a way um, I think really maybe I was 11 or t uh, 12 years old at the in Alabama I'm from Birmingham Alabama and at the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame we had free Saturday classes and my men my mentor there he w went to the University of North Texas he was a piano player and he, we were just learning every single Saturday, and they were free lessons. So, man, that's I mean, a wonderful thing to yeah, offer, isn't yeah. it? Wow. And I just, I just kind of kept pushing with it. My undergraduate degree technically was music performance, but within that, there's so many different things you can do. It doesn't mean just classical music. So I kind of focus on classical, commercial, and jazz. And I mean, you never really fully master it. But you get more and more, and I, honestly, it becomes an obsession in a, in a little bit, you know? You can't stop practicing, and if you do, you get this itch. You're like, okay, I need to be practicing. Looks like everybody's stuff. agreeing with that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much my intro into jazz, and I mean, I got stuck in it when I got here, so. <laughs> nice. Well, we're glad you're stuck in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, there wasn't like a specific point or anything, but um, back in middle school, jazz band was an option. So I was like, oh, that sounds cool. So I did jazz band in both middle school and high school. I had a pretty good jazz program at my high school. And then when I got to undergrad, I just, I still did jazz band, but I mainly focused on classical. Um, so heading into grad school, I really wanted to be at a school where I really could do both. And like I said, I'm double majoring in both here. Um, so I mainly came here for the fact that I could study with uh, Professor Stephen Jones, because he's That's an amazing great. tenor yeah. saxophone. Phonist. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really got into jazz in my master's, but it's been something I've been doing since middle school. Um, my background's actually in rock and roll and metal. My, my first, my first uh, foray into music was as a rock musician. Uh, my dad was a drummer 
I started out on drum set and that quickly turned into just two cacophonous to manage. So I started playing bass and I uh, joined orchestra and I started loving classical music. All the while I was songwriting with my friends in high school. And then I feel like, you know, you, you study music for long enough and you kind of just end up at, at jazz maybe. Like for some people you just, you go down this pathway of harmony and things and then eventually you sort of find that jazz is like, it's like a version of it that's still coherent because there's some styles of music that are incoherent to Western ears, but um, it's still coherent, but it's just very colorful. Would you say, would you say something? Yeah, you said something about colorful, colorfulness and, and uh, just, you know, it really embellished harmonies and, and really a sort of sense of freedom when it comes to composition when compared to maybe other, other styles of music. So yeah, I, I just, I found that. And I mean, I still perform other styles. I still love all styles of music, but I feel like for a certain part of my brain, it's just like hooked on jazz kind of. Uh, I guess for me, it was kind of a combination of the last two. Uh, I came from a very like rock and metal background. My parents both listened to hard rock, and uh, my dad loved grunge from the 90s. And I guess just in rebellion to that, I found <laughs> classical and jazz music. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> to just find my own little niche. And it's uh, especially like high school jazz band. That was my first real introduction to jazz. And I'm still getting into it, still learning so much about it, and I'll, I'll probably never find the end of the path. Yeah, <laughs> I'll always keep learning. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I was totally the same. Uh, I started learning Queen songs on piano just for fun when I was in eighth grade. And so immediately I think I was into the weird stuff. And then I found jazz, and it was like, oh, yeah, this is totally weird enough. Yeah. So, <laughs> <my home. laughs> to, but exactly what Devin said, it, it's, it's like if you're, I think for a lot of musicians, we're looking for more ways to express ourselves, and jazz is just totally free in that sense. Yeah. Um, I don't have a super musical family, but my, uh, my dad's a great singer, and my brother plays guitar really well. So they were kind of playing and singing. Like my dad sang in church a lot, so I was kind of around music a little bit. But I was always attracted to the drums. I can't tell you why, but <laughs> as long as I can remember, I was always listening to music, listening for the drums. Or were you always air drumming? Yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, my mom always played country music around the house, so I grew up on a lot of that. And then I just started playing drum set once I finally got one in high school. And then uh, I started practicing stuff getting a little bit better but once I came here I'm getting my bachelor's in percussion performance was which is all like classical stuff so it's like timpani marimba not drum set but I wanted to play drum set so I was like well the only opportunity I really have here is to join a jazz band mm. so I took a few lessons a couple semesters ago and then I auditioned and thank the lord I made it I made it into the <laughs> jazz band too and that was kind of just a, a jumping off point because then I started playing with these guys they invited me to have these jams every week which would just force me to learn music and practice more. So from then on, I just fell in love with jazz because it's so different and it demands so much from you as a musician. Well, I think it challenges yeah. you as a musician, you know, the jazz music. I know a lot of the very accomplished guitar players and keyboard players, piano players here in town that are moving to the jazz because it's challenging them beyond what they're normally playing. You know, so I, I find it very interesting to see people start in the normally it creates incredible musicians i mean to me jazz musicians are kind of this top tier of, of musicians such a pleasure watching you guys play i know and day. i love that the songs can just be long they don't have to just be three minutes
<laughs> what was the last song? The third song uh, was the original that you composed. And what was what do you call? What is the name of that one? That tune was Tunnel Dug Deep. Tunnel Dug so Deep. That was kind of me studying Wayne Shorter and trying to figure out how would he write a tune with a certain melody. Okay. It was a mix of Wayne Shorter, but also of a little bit of Bill Evans with the melody. I was studying a tune called um, Very Early, I believe, at the time. So I said, what if I did this? What if I did this? And I went through a different, I went through a few different combinations of things I like, but what you heard today is kind of, well, I'm going to probably keep revising it, but what you heard today <laughs> is where we're at today. So, yeah. How many songs have you written? Oof. Um, or an ounce. How many, how many songs have I finished is the question. Oh, okay. How many songs <laughs> have you finished? Same, yeah. I, yeah, I should have put it that um, way. <laughs> I will say the songs I have finished, there's maybe three or four that I am okay. That I that, that you I, will do for other like. people? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I have sketches of tons of stuff. So, yeah. So before we wrap this up, I want to ask you guys, what advice would you give young musicians, kids mm -hmm. in the junior high and middle school, or maybe even, you know, college kids or even even adults wanting to get into jazz music what advice would you give someone who's wanting to give into the, get into this kind of scene um i would say listen yeah we're all gonna say that and i <laughs> listen to it listen um i feel that's probably if not the most important component to it um you can have your different interpretations but i think Listening is the main thing because you have to, it's like a template. You have something that you're kind of working for or working towards. It, or uh, Listening is, uh, you can have discipline, you can have everything else, but if you haven't listened to it, I mean, where do you, what do you? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, there are many dialects of music. Like there's even, even within classical music, there's like the Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn dialect, and there's like the Straussian Brahmsian dialect and there's like you know there's all these different forms ways of speaking music through composition and in the 20th century you have like the beginning of commercial music where you have popular music as a style right and it, there's very there's like little ton of like offshoots within that country all these other things uh, but jazz is its own dialect and I think listening is the only way you can really start to develop that dialect that understanding for that dialect um, well it makes sense because you know I know for me as a songwriter and, and composer music as well you know, the, the type of music that you listen to, you start to feel it, you know, and you feel the groove and you feel the, the different types of tempo. So, did you, Christina, did you have something that, that you wanted to add? Yeah, to that? yeah. And I like how Nigel is talking about listening. But in addition to that, um, definitely you have to be very passionate and driven and determined um, and just know that you're not going to be good right away. Like for me, my freshman year undergrad, I didn't get into jazz band. And then now I'm graduating with a master's in it. So just knowing that, you know, you're not going to be good right away. Yeah, don't sure. stop. Don't stop playing, yeah. even if it doesn't happen That's right. right away. Play to your That's fingers, great believe, advice. Man. That's right. So listen, do you have something you want to say, Carl? Uh, practice every day. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for at least at least thirty minutes. Yeah. But like, two hours a day would be amazing <laughs> if I could afford it. Do either one of you guys want to touch on this question? Uh, you go first. You, you, you've got to find things that you love and try to emulate them. If you're not studying music that you love, then you're gonna be bored. And that's the just trying to copy somebody you learn so much about what they're trying to say. Now you can say your own thing yeah exactly oh uh, yeah just kind of what they were saying you gotta listen of course find out what you like and just dive into that and uh ju you just gotta practice you gotta put the time in that's what i had to do because i was so late to jump into this genre with these guys just to keep up i had to work like two or three four times as much and uh if you just keep at it and you keep listening you'll start to pick up and start to get a little bit better. In yeah, I think Ryan's a great testament as to what can happen if you put your mind to it, right? How yeah, quickly you can grow, yeah. Passion. A little bit of chops and all of a sudden you're a jazz player.